Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Um, today I was thinking what is the message that there be for uh, us that the Lord wants us to give and a change and change. But we always study the word of God from the old book, from the Bible, from the book which is going to continue eternal. This is a channel of the truth. Thy word is truth. Pastor Susie Antun from Daughter of the Most High from Rivers of Living Water. Um, so my message today is be tested by fire. And uh, uh, I was not supposed to be the preacher today, so... But anyway, the Lord is giving me that beautiful picture. Um, and I'm sharing those beautiful pictures which touch me, the Lord's breath. And uh, so what is it? The Father, uh, the Lord was always showing himself as in a, in a format of fire. So with the, the people of Israel, he led them and he was like a pole of fire leading them everywhere they go. And maybe make, give them uh, a warm feeling into the wilderness, 40 years. And a cloud, of course, as we all know. So that was the way God the Father was showing Yahweh. And here was something very interesting happened. Uh, Moses saw a, a, bur a bush which are not burning. It's fire, but was not consumed. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. Very interesting. And this reminds me straight away of that fire who was on the Pentecost, which appeared on the disciple, and this fire was not consuming them. Um, we hear also about, you know, the, the, the resurrection, resurrection church in Israel, when every Saturday uh, before the, um, are you going to call it the, the Easter, are going to call it the resurrection, resurrection feast. On that Saturday night, Sunday morning, whatever, I don't know exactly, I, I think it's Saturday, there is fire on the church which is not consumable and then start to burn. That thing which was uh, into um, the description of God all the time. But here is like, um, I'm just going to get you a little bit graphic, some picture which can touch you if you take them. Um, there was... We always think it's a, it's a bush, a small a little tree, whatever, and uh, and that's all into our understanding because it's drawn like that uh, by many artists. But let me tell you, you know, he saw a fire and he was not, a, what is this, like a fire? Ah, and he was not afraid to approach that fire. So today the Holy Ghost fire will come upon us, will fall in a fresh new way. And I don't want you to be afraid of this fire. Just go into it. Go discover it if you do not know. That curiosity or that attraction to knowing a new thing was the team who take uh, Moses from a, a just a simple um, uh, shepherd, you know, with few sheep, a runaway from the Pharaoh, a criminal runaway, fugitive, all those 40 years to the man of God who faced the most powerful man in the world on that time, which is the Pharaoh and um, execute judgment on him instead of being the opposite way. So today, don't be afraid of the fire of God because this fire is not to consume us for today. For the time being, it's not consumable fire. But later on, this fire will have a different nature. As we can uh, hear from the people who attend, you know, this that the fire of God on that is not burning so you can touch it. And after that, it, it, it come and be real fire. But that man who was not afraid to approach a big fire, very weird, the green is still green. I don't know how can we explain this. And he wanted to go what it is. Why you don't discover the Holy Spirit today and get attracted to all the virtue and the things as only the Spirit of the living God can give you. Because if you do, go to that uh, uh, pathway as Moses did. He returned back to that fire and he was a different man. Look at him here and look at him here, full of power. It's a different man. That power of the Holy Ghost will mark you, will change you, will form and give you another dimension of the life. So he's here seeing it. Oh, who cares? You know, it's a fire. 
why should you go and be attracted to it? And that was not uh, really like flame who consume. It was non-consuming as the other picture. And he wanted to, to <clears throat> get to know that nature of this unusual un, uh, fire. So you go there into the mighty place when there's oven of God, that furnace of God is there. And you'll not be afraid that you'll be burned or your uh, smoke or whatever. No, but don't ignore it. Don't be satisfied with where you are. Because many Christians are mediocre. I don't know if that word is it's a French word. You are not living a life of full satisfaction and, and really um, full inside out. Because you don't want to go to that depth of this fire. You see it from far and you pass. Yeah, I heard about it. Yeah, I did have the Holy Ghost when I was baptized young as a baby. Whatever excuse you want to say, but you're not really trying to go into the depths of that experience with God because this is an experience for the first time, but it's to be repeated later on in a different format. And God, the creator, is always new. He will not give you every time the, the burning bush, which is not really consumed. But Moses faced something very, very real. He bowed before the power and the presence of this fire over him. And he knew that, that he met with God. He was just touched and then uh, tell him to remove the, his shoes because in the Holy Land, he understand that nature. He didn't run away. He was not kind of afraid. And during this experience, he saw the son of God the pre-incarnated son of God, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a format on, on this artist shop, Jesus. God forgive him. Uh, but he saw the son of the angel of the Lord, uh, the pre-incarnated Christ. You can't see Jesus and be the same. Something dynamic and real. Gonna change every cell and every DNA in you. You're not going to be that uh, fully satisfied of where you are. You will always have the desire, where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? What else, Lord? Your nature will be different. This is different. That's the nature of God who is always creative and wants to do things. And I bet you that Moses got that fire with him from that place. And this fire ne never left him after that. Um, it was showing on his face, on his uh, features and everything. Uh, I, I really many times preach about Moses and every time is different things. So fire from heaven, it happened in the Old Testament. Does it happen in the New Testament? We will see. There is a few um, real story that we know. Um, judgment in the Old Testament. Uh, say the very significant uh, seven records of fire from heaven, maybe more, but we're going to speak about a few of them. Sodom and Gomorrah, when the, the, destroy, the fire who fall from heaven destroyed the whole city, and there is five cities around Sodom and Gomorrah were always destroyed. And the, the verse, the link is in here. That's really serious. It's a destructive. So didn't do that to Moses. That fire never destroyed him. Fire from heaven, which came on Nadab and Abihu. The power of God devoured them, destroyed them, devoured them. Elijah, after, uh, you know, that event, you know, he brought the, you know, the, the fire of God on the sacrifice. We're all familiar with that one. And we all, you know, that one, most of us. Um, the King Ahaziah, which was after the one following uh, King Ahab. Uh, he was sick and he desired to find, uh, he went and asked uh, the Baal uh, for uh, his health, if he will live. And then the man of God knew. And he said, is there no man of God in Israel? So you go and ask Baal Ba'ur, I think something like that. Uh, Second King 1, 10 to 12. Uh, if I am the man of God, he sent for him, you know, um, messenger that the fire of God will come and, f and consume you. It consumed 50 men and another time 50 men. So he knew from the first time he knew now uh, Elijah how to deal with fire. 
It's not like someone who is like that. Everyone should be of that kind of approach to the fire eternal of God. It's either consume you or destroy you or devour you. It's a lot of things. So what kind of heat you want to the, 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 the power of God to come and the fire of God to come upon you? We see other ones destructive too. You know, the fire from heaven came and destroyed Job's flock. Destructive. But something here a little bit different. The fire of God is always coming when there is a sacrifice has to be consumed. That's the way God was approving um, the sacrifice. He approved it, yes. So fire come from heaven and consume the, the sacrifice. We've seen that into David's sacrifice in 1 Corinthians 20, uh, Chronicles 21. And another time in the time of uh, his son Solomon and the, the dedication of the temple, sacrifice uh, of, of the dedication of the temple, fire from heaven. Why I do not know that those stories are not clear in our mind like the one of Elijah that he brought heaven when he dared the, the 450 um, prophet of the Baal. This is the only event that's in our heart as if he has some magic power, especially for him because he is a different man. He, he went to heaven without dying. You don't think that this should be yours uh, or your portion as much as it should be. But I'm telling you, if you touch that um, fire, non-consumable fire, it will touch you. You touch it, it will touch you. That touch mutual. It's up to you because I preach always the goal goes to people and then some of them, yeah, we got it. We have it. Definitely we have it, especially Protestant people who are not Pentecostal because they think that the experience of their baptism is just good enough. But I'm telling you, if you don't touch, you will not be touched. You have to touch that fire. Go with that curiosity. Go with that desire to discover or explore that power was of, of that different flame, which is not consuming, and the tree was still green, the bush was not burning. Something with God that you never know yet. Don't be satisfied, because if you are satisfied, you're locked into that place of satisfaction. So here is Mount Carmel, of course, when Elijah had uh, the fire of God falling from heaven, the one that we only, most of us know. Um, is this like some few example of the Old Testament? But there is other example in the New Testament. There is no record that the fire of God fall from heaven the same way that it fall into the Old Testament. But um, uh, what is it? You know, uh, when the disciple of Jesus, John and James, were walking with him, and they uh, Samaritan people rejected the message of Jesus. They said to him, because they, they know about that nature and that way of God's judgment, um, will we ask for fire to come from heaven and devour them. <laughs> Jesus said, no, 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 no. No, that devouring fire will come, but it's not a time now. So, but we do see in the Pentecost, the tongues of fire, and this fire did not consume the people. Exactly the same way as happened with Moses. It didn't consume him. Uh, the Holy Spirit showed up. He looked like a fire, but he was not really, I mean, he's not fire, but he showed up in a format of fire. But let me tell you about the best. Uh, I'm going to teach you two Bible verses. Revelation 13, 13. And we're going to go into it later on. But all of us preach about John 3.16. How about we try Luke 3.16? Another one. So you who go evangelize, please try that one. Luke 3.16, not Jan John 3.16. And why is that? Because John said to them, uh, I indeed baptize you with the water, but there is one mightier than I come. That I'm not deserved to touch you know, the, the things of his shoes the lace of his shoes, and this one, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Use this one, evangelical people. Use the 13, the 316 of Luke. 
try to know it. I've never heard someone preaching about it like the 316 of John. Yeah, it is powerful 316 of John, but this is the key. And someone will come baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. How about that? Again, again, evangelical, like that in your notes, Luke 316, and he shall baptize you the Holy Ghost and fire. So there is someone here who prophesy about him, but we didn't see it in his lifetime. But did he really do it? Of course he did. There was here the Holy Ghost, the spirit of the living God, the spirit of Jesus came upon people. They were like talking and walking and just please the one who hate pictures, just give, you know, a clap for that artist who show up the expression of the people on that moment because they were amazing. Let this, uh, you know, pictures touch your heart and, and, and make that dryness in you. Protestant, you're too dry. Let God use any way to solve, to make your heart soften, receive the Holy Ghost. Preach about the, the, the Luke 316 and ye shall come and baptize you by the Holy Ghost and fire. We're talking about the fire. He show up here, the spirit of Jesus. Did he baptize them? Did he really fell upon them in a fire format? Look at this. They were just normal talking to each other. Oh, God bless a hundred times. Hundred, hundred percent, you know, the people who draw those pictures. Look at the expression of their faces. You know, <clears throat> it's not a picture to be worshipped, but picture someone who knew to express by no words <clears throat> the beauty of the Holy Ghost. Look at them. They were talking, good talk about Jesus, confessing whatever, encouraging each other. Uh, anointing, you know, the one or, uh, you know, adding that one who's lost the instead of Judah, the Iscariot, and doing all their business here, normal Christian life, I would say, like we do normal Christian life. But that's the moment then the Holy Ghost came upon them. And look at what happening, changing these people, which are norms. These are normal people. They have no much of things of God. But look at their faces and look now when the Holy Ghost shall come. So, Father, I just pray that the Holy Ghost will come into such an extent on the people listening to my video today, that they will be baptized not only by the Holy Ghost, if they reject by the fire that they cannot really resist. They will be desiring all that you have for them. They will not be afraid like the people of Israel were, but they will be really, really exploring and desiring like Moses did and there to go and see that non-consuming fire. So Father, come and baptize us. Let us totally and completely be changed, you know, and uttering that new utters, new as aspect of the baptism of fire will come upon us as we pray, Lord. We don't want to have the same or same or of every time, same Bible verse, same way of thinking, same way of connecting with you and with others. We want some new experience, Lord. And when we get into that moment that you touch us into that strong, um, huge voltage of heaven, touch us with fire. The fire of the Holy Ghost will come upon us and consume every, uh, every, uh, negativity, every rejection, every unloving heart, every sin, everything which is not giving you the chance to be totally uh, using us into the power that in the, in the dimension that you wanted to use us, Father, I pray that none will be the same. It's a simple preaching I know today, Lord, but I pray that your power will touch every soul and spirit Touch them, balbilhum, Yarab, as you did unto the Babylon. This is like you confused all of them. So everything which is good in us will vanish and will come here into the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the fire when we do not know anything in ourselves anymore, but we know you. Baptize us, baptize us with fire, a new fire, fresh fire from heaven. Make our ministry go to another direction full of dynamic full of power, full of things that we desire to do, but we get used to, to the mediocrity of our Christianity, our 
warm Christianity, when that hot, that level of baptism will come upon us, come Holy Ghost with all your measure. Just open your arms over us and baptize us again and again and again. Fill us over. Fill your children to an overflow, Lord. Fill your children. Fill all those vessels being emptied or half emptied or quarter or just a sip in them. Or those one who get dry like a stone or like a... Baptize us again and again and again. Fill us again, Lord. With your spirit. So this is picture of the Saturday that I was talking about. You know, that flame, it come and it's very, very strange flame in the beginning. You hold it like this and it doesn't burn. That's non-consumable fire. And it go into the whole big church. And people start to touch it. The thing is, if you don't like that non-consumable fire, which is available from the Pentecost till the day, uh, there is another fire yet to come. Like I said to you, we're going to know two Bible verses today. One of them was Luke 3.16, and this one is 13.13. Very easy to remember. Revelation 13.13. And what is this one saying? But this is not sent from heaven by, but what is it? Uh, there is fire. He make a fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of man. Uh, where is the Bible verse itself? Sorry. Uh Let's go to it. Maybe next one. I, I don't know. I uh, I will go there and read it from the word of God. So we go to Revelation 13 and the verse 13. And what is the beauty of this? Uh, well, it should be into my preaching, without doubt. Uh, what is that Bible verse talking about? Find next, find next. It reminds Satan of his fate. Pastor Paul was supposed to be our preacher today. Uh, he always reminds the devil of his faith. And it's a very, very strong weapon because all of us pass into difficulties and trials and things. But you remind him of his faith. So what is this saying? And he, we're talking about the second beast, which is the religious format, uh, um, the second beast, not the beast, which is the political one. This is the religious one. And he does great wonders so that he make fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceive. Uh, so I'm, I'm mixing the verses. So sorry for that. But here he going to do try to do the same fire uh, that was done by God. Fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. And he was able to deceive by miracles. Even you know the uh, the people uh, by by great deal, but um, let me tell you something uh, very interesting. Of course, this fire is not coming coming from God, but the devil is capable, or the the power of evil, into the that guy. The second beast, the religious uh, character, will be able to do sign and bring heaven, um, you know, fire from heaven. It reminds me of the Baal when he came into confrontation with um, Elijah. I said, yeah, call upon him. Oh, maybe he's sleeping. And he started to mock people, you know, to mock them. And they were sitting there cutting themselves, screaming, shouting, trying, dancing, do whatever they wanted to do to bring that fire on their sacrifice, but they couldn't. 
So devil cannot do it. So what happened to him into that stage on Revelation 13? He brought uh, false miracles uh, and, and he brought heaven, uh, fire from heaven. But let me, um, yeah, it's it's uh, the verse which are, and Satan and his troops went on the breath of the earth and compassed the camp of the saint about this, uh, the one that you should remember, 29. Revelation 29, remind him of his fate and the beloved city Jerusalem and the fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And when you, you hear that, you know, like uh, you think they are consumed by the fire of God, but remind him when you are in difficulty, you say you continue to harass me. You do not know that that's your fate. But let me um, go on that people who, you know, why he could do that one time and he couldn't do it later. Um, it's usually here in Judge 9, he was telling you that the anointing uh, was uh, Malik, Abi Malik, he was hurting from his family. So he's telling them, if you really truly want to anoint me as a king over you, and he was taking the example of the different kind of trees, the fig tree, the, the vine, and all those things, and olive tree, then let the fire come out. So sign of the anointing, if you anoint me, let fire come out and devour you. So the fire of God with the anointing come to not change you. Uh, the change is a small, transform you. Maybe that's a better that's word. Because you won't be the same. Even your DNA, everything about you, everything will be not the same. There's no way. You're not a, an, um, a better you. You'll be another you. Not a better you. God will not improve in you because you're not good enough. And I'm saying to you and I'm saying to myself and everyone, it's the power of transformation. Or otherwise, it will devour you. That's the anointing. So don't think the anointing will come. And don't do that serious change. Now I'm going to tell uh, something to uh, the Muslim people. And I hope that they will listen carefully to this. The reason to Muhammad, where is it? In the Quran. One Bible verse, very funny. I find it very funny. Because, of course, we knew about, uh, uh, I'm just sharing it now, you know, the 450 uh, Baal uh, followers, prophets, they call prophet. They couldn't bring the fire no matter what. But we see into the book of Revelation 13, 13, that he is capable of bringing the fire of God from heaven down. Something happened, you know, to him. But see the deception of the Quran. And I want you to see that he said that uh, here in the Quran 3, 183, there are those who say, indeed, Allah has taken Allah, it means God, has taken uh, for them, has taken our promise not to believe any messenger, messenger mean prophet, until he bring us an offering with fire, which fire from heaven will consume. So he said that God has to confirm that prophet by bringing a fire. That because he saw that into the Old Testament, all uh, most of them have been confirmed by fire. Uh, Muhammad said, uh, there uh, have already come to your messengers, to your prophets before me, that clear proof, and even that of which you speak. So there was a clear proof that the fire came upon uh, Moses, came upon Elijah, and all that nimty. Um, But so why did you kill them? See how the sneaky way, because he can't bring fire. He's like the Baal prophet. He can't bring fire. So he deceived people by saying those words, and they took that uh, argument and walk with it. So why did you kill them? If you should be truthful. Satan, the deceiver in the Quran 3, uh, 183, produced a defense against Baal, inability to bring fire from heaven to the offering. So this is not my revelation. I just read it and I found it uh, really interesting. Knowing that only God can deliver fire, Satan cl uh, cleverly create a deceptive story to avoid a second fire, uh, fire from heaven failure. This is in the Quran 3. Satan's story allow Muhammad and those around him to believe 
he could give a sign, but he didn't. He was trying to convince them. Oh, they came before and you killed them. Do you have to show, prove yourself that you are men of God and bring fire? This, because we see here, Elijah brought the fire and that was easy for him to bring it again and again. If you know the power of God, it's easy for you to lay hand on someone and the power hit the person. Listen, people of God, it's power of transformation. So Muhammad deceived them to say, you didn't believe in those other ones. But why you didn't bring the fire on you to prove that you are one of the prophets like the other one that you're trying to be? Deceiver, deceiver. Knowing that God can deliver fire, Satan cleverly created a deceptive story to avoid a second trial from uh, heaven failure. He will not be able to bring fire like the Baal, Baal prophet. This is in Quran 3. Satan's story allowed Muhammad and those around him to believe he could give a sign to call down fire from heaven in their view. This pr uh, story prevents another repeat of Baal's failure and the death of his prophet Muhammad. Someone has uh, read the Quran and find that interesting story, which I find it very interesting too, because he is like, either you are like uh, 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 Elijah capable of bringing heaven uh, fire on earth, or you are like the Baal, unable to do it. Since he couldn't do it, and I don't think he did even one sign, not even one sign. And of course, the story that he went to Jerusalem is a big, uh, big lie cannot really go on uh, two or three years old kids. Um, we have to prove, you know, this. So that failure for him, King 18, the Baal cannot bring fire from heaven and that the dare. If God is God, bring fire from heaven. If God is not altar, sacrifice, God is there, fire of God will come upon. Same for you. If your heart is in sacrifice coming to God, the fire of God, if that altar of your heart is ready, the fire of God will hit you. But the opposition, the fear, oh, go Moses, talk to God and let us know about it. Go preacher, tell us, and we're going to be resting here in the air condition, enjoying the work that you did the whole week to amaze us. No, 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 no. If you want to touch the unconsumable fire, the unconsumable fire will touch you. He's ready. Because if this fire will not, uh, unconsumable fire will not touch you, you'll be touched by something else. That destruct, destructive fire. And here like that Bible verse, which I want Pastor uh, Paul was teaching us to say this. And they went upon the breath of the earth and encompassed the saints, he's talking about the false prophet and the, uh, the second uh, uh, beast. The first and uh, the first beast compares the camp of the saint about and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire. So there is the devil, there is, you know, the first beast and the second beast cast all into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beasts and the false prophet are uh, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So here in Revelation, he said that he will to be tormented in ever and ever. There is another one into the uh, Isaiah, I think, if you have time, we can go for it, that he will uh, cease to, to exist. But here is very clear that he will be tormented day and night forever and ever. This is a revelation of uh, John. So let me go back to why do we have to go for this fire? What, why? Uh, I don't want to exceed the hour, so please check the time. Uh, the refining pot is for silver and furnace, for gold. But the Lord tests the heart of man. You have to be tested. Your heart should be tested. It's from the Proverbs 17. We're talking Old Testament always first. So that's refining uh, 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 for silver, furnace for gold. But God is going to test your heart. Is your heart true? You can mislead people. 
but not with God. And here is the refining, that's the same thing. So you are testing, your heart has to be tested. Uh, another one here from Zechariah, that's another one. I will bring the one third through the fire, will refine them as silver is refined and, the, and to test them as gold. So God is taking the ch his children when they suffer, really suffering in a big deal, it's because God is testing them. They have to pass through that. And I have um, uh, this one too, that the trial of your faith, your faith has to be tested. You say, I have faith. Oh, really? Devil has faith too. And it has to be tried by fire. This is from Peter 1.1.7. 1, 1, if your faith is real, if you are really believer, and I like this one. It's not in the Bible, but very, very nice, well well said. One day, he took his children to see the goldsmith refine gold after the ancient manner of the East. And, and then they ask, how do you know when the gold is purified? How would you know that this is enough for the... Because he put fire, fire again, and fire again. He asked him, and he answered, when I can see my face in it. When the face of Jesus be seen in you, <laughs> that you are refined. You could be, you know, here, uh, you know, uh, barbecue that side, maybe that side, but then that side, that side, that's everywhere. And you shine the glory and Jesus will be showing up through you and in you to others. When you see your face into the gold, you know that you are really refined and that's the time to stop. Wonderful words of God. Uh, the Lord is say, uh, in Isaiah 48, he said, Behold, means shuf uh, anzur, I have refined you, but not with silver, and I have chosen into the furnace of the affliction. This verse make me really, really, um, really, do I really know God? So he put you into affliction. Brother and sister, this is very serious story. Affliction. No one wants to be afflicted. Well, this is here. I refined you. I have chosen you in the furnace of affliction. The way of God are very strange, but then with all the impurity that the Holy Ghost only can burn in you, you will start to be shining and Jesus' picture in you will be showing up. Every man in Corinthians 3.13, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. What is your work? What's the quality of your work? Huh? Every work. And I'm just going to surprise you. I don't know where I heard it. So it's not my revelation. But something good that to share is only works that you did for love that will remain and will continue to follow you, whatever. All what you did otherwise will go unrecorded, unimportant, doesn't go to heaven. It's only the things which were done by your heart when you loved someone or loved God. So here is those burning. Can you imagine the furnace of affliction? I was just like really trembling when I see that Bible verse. There is many people suffering today. And the Lord is want to encourage you, brother and sister, into that suffering. You know, I can see we had a friend, you know, he, he lost his only son, 30 something years old, who has been dedicated his life to, to preach the gospel and die for no reason. This affliction, brother and sister. Well, your works will be tested. But here is when you really are the man of God. If I am the man of God. <laughs> Elijah said, may fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50 men. The fire of God came and consumed. So the fire of God will come and consume the evil part in you. May you go and meet the Lord without any evil in you. 
that he won't find anything need to be burned or consumed. May you go there and be really a Jesus uh, picture. You be really called Masihi. Masihi means like Christ-like, anointed with the anointing that is the consumption fire. The fire will come and consume 50 men. Then the fire of God fell from heaven and consumed them. Um, and, and like I said, here is the fate of Lucifer. Uh, Ezekiel is saying something. Ezekiel 28, I thought that was Isaiah. Ezekiel 28, he was uh, he was walking into the down into the midst of the stone of fire of the he, he defiled him the, his sanctuary and bring forth the fire. This is where he were in the beginning, a fire from the midst of you and it shall devour you and will bring you as the ashes upon the earth in the sight of all of them that behold you. From that Bible verse, you think that the devil, uh, Lucifer, will be that uh, it's not anointing cherub, it's the, 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 the covering cherub. According to the Hebrew and to the Arabic version, he is not anointed. Satan uh, or Lucifer is not anointed. No, he's stretching, covering. He was covering the glory of God so the people, uh, the angels under him can take less exposure to that high uh, uh, power, sp uh, speed, high magnitude of power who is in God. So <clears throat> I spoke about that a few times. So here is the end of it, according to Ezekiel, that come fire up from him so satan has a fire when he bring fire from heaven it's kind of that fire will come from him and even that you know um god has to allow it to pass he didn't allow it in time of muhammad and he didn't allow it in time of the ban but there will come the time that will bring forth a fire from the midst of you and it shall devour you so it will devour himself and i will bring you to ashes ashes mean like nothing upon the earth and in the sight of all them who behold you. Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28 was saying that uh, that he's vanished. But according to uh, the 20 of book of Revelation, that he will continue into the lake of fire forever and ever. So we're coming to that place of our preaching brother and sister um, and, and see how is delusional. In Thessalonians 2, uh, Thessalonians 2, 9, signs and wonders that serve the lie is among the things that a powerful, he will bring a powerful delusion. So he bring fire by delusional thing and uh, to make people who wanted to believe him, the one who do not like the truth. Uh, but this is the, the fate of him in Thessalonians 2, 5 to 12. He said, the Lord shall consume you with the spirit of his mouth with the breath of his mouth, and shall he destroy him with the brightness of his coming. The Lord will show up here, and the brightness of his coming and the breath of his mouth will destroy totally and completely uh, that entity. Uh, and later on he say, for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all uh, be damned who believe not the truth, but they had pleasure into our righteousness. So today, you have that non-consuming fire. You don't want Revelation 20, that lake of fire forever and ever for Satan and for uh, the two beasts. You wanted to have that non-consuming fire that the Holy Ghost, when he came into the beginning on the disciple, or when he came into the beginning on Moses, that amazing presence of Yahweh and people all, they see a fire tongues over them. They were amazed by the power of God when it hit them. You need this revelation, brother and sister, and I pray that the Holy Ghost, uh, you don't resist and the Holy Ghost will allow you to be baptized. We come right now upon us and take us to another. The baptizer is here today. Don't let him go without baptizing you. So in the name of Jesus, I lay hand in the spirit for every head who's bowing down and ready to receive the baptizer. Baptize them, Father. Baptize them, Jesus, by the Holy Ghost and power. This non-consuming fire that you baptize um, Moses with it and you want to baptize us even one more time. 
I pray that in the name of Jesus, touch them, Lord. May all resistance will go. May they really flow with the Holy Ghost. Then may get all the benefit. May the power of transformation of the Holy Ghost will come upon you right now and you won't know it yourself in the, in the future. That you know, you look past and you say, that's not me anymore. I pray, Father, that there will be a real experience for the people of God today. They are not going to be totally talking and talking and, and without with dry spirits, but they will have the enlightenment of the Holy Ghost who change every cell and every thought and every intention in them, that they will be really as shine as the, the sun, as your son, and the, the, the uh, guy will see into the gold, his face, he know that that's purified. So Father, we come sometimes uh, with um, blaming spirit, with um, crying spirit for you because we've been afflicted into many ways and any uh, things we didn't accept that your will is to refine us. So we confess it as a sin right now, Lord. And we pray that your spirit will come upon us without restriction. That you do whatever it need to be done in our spirit and soul, Holy Ghost. We're too ugly and too mediocre in ourselves for the time being as Christian. We want to beautify, to be worth it to the King of Kings when he's coming. I pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.